Thank you for being with us on this episode of Diaspora Lounge. We're going to talk about the man called Pastor Toby, who is supposed to have had a relationship with somebody's wife, the footballer named Coyote, and they talked about the three children of that couple belonging to him. Now, whether or not those children belong to to this to the footballer or to the Pastor Toby guy, it's not really my concern here. I want us to talk about the fact that somebody who is supposedly a pastor has been in a relationship with somebody else's wife up to the extent of even being accused of fathering the children that that woman has. What is it that makes it possible for these types of things to happen? What are the women thinking about and what is this person who is supposed to be a pastor doing when he's doing this? Is this part of the forgiveness of God and his mercies? That's what I want us to really talk about because the way that we Nigerians uphold churches and the people that people call pastors, I, 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 it's, it's affecting our lives in so many ways. Let's dig into this. Let me get some understanding from other people because to me it's just mind-boggling i have oni in the studio with me oni great to have you Hi. so yeah so um you you overheard this um story about the pastor the man who they call pastor toby who's supposed to be a very flamboyant man running a church that was called the spark nation in the uk i'm not sure if that church is still on right now. I know there were some allegations and some allegation, allegations of of um, uh, with money issues with the church and with that pastor. And um, now, latest thing in the news is that he's been involved with a married woman. And there was actually a voice note. This voice note is very suspicious. Whether or not, I don't know if you've heard it, I'm going to play it for you. Whether or not it is true that there was a relationship, I can't say. We can't say because I haven't seen any evidence. The voice is very suspicious. He may or may not be the father of those children. What I want us to get into, as you've heard me in the introduction, is even if this didn't happen between these people, we know that people who are called pastors have been involved in things like this. I want to hear from you. <laughs> I have a little, I, I know some of, I know, I know the way you think as regards certain things, but I want to really just hear it from you because to me, I, th I find it mind boggling that anybody would have a sexual relationship with a pastor, a person who is called a pastor, who they are not married to. How do they explain these things? What is it in your, what, what is it that has crossed your own mind when you think about things like this? Okay. The so let, me thing... play the voice note. let me play the voice note before I forget about it. Eh? Just listen to this. Pick me up. Stop making this. Stop making me even feel more bad. You did not wake me up. It's my Shut birthday. Up. Yes. Let me tell you something. Yeah. You always feel that you can always tell me like I need you to take a rest. You, you, do you honestly feel that I don't want to rest? See, when was the last time I spoke with you? You didn't think that I didn't call you because I wanted to rest. My balloon girls, they actually slept in my home. Everybody is up in this house. Everybody as I'm talking to you. I've been awake since one mid, mid like 12 mid morning. You think people would not, you think you, 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 you deliberately didn't want to call me in order to give people a chance to call me. What's that? That's heartbreaking. Like you think I want to hear their voice before yours? The last time we spoke was in the evening. I just left you the last message we like we chatted i've been sleeping i'm oh, sorry i don't know what else to say fine okay so that's supposed to be a conversation between the pastor toby guy and the and the lady that he's alleged to have had a relationship with somebody else's wife so let me hear your view on this <laughs> yes <laughs> Oh what my God! What is I, I am always. Do you hear the background noise? No, no, no. Okay, no. don't. Oh, well, no. it, it comes on and off. That's so okay. I am always at a loss. You know, when I hear things about these men of God, um, I am not a fan of men of of men of God. I always say, 
I understand the place of, you know, anointing. I understand the place of res um, respecting those who are, 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 you know, who are servants of God, who God has called and allocated different gifts. I, I understand the place of respect. I understand the place of reverence for the man of God. I understand the place of fatherhood. I understand the place of leadership. I understand the place of, you know, um, um, shepherdhood, right? You know, someone being a shepherd. I understand that. But, but, but that's where it ends. I don't revere a man of God. Like, I, I see people, like, w w worship these people even, e even higher than the God who they are supposed to be serving. The Bible is the authority for everything, right? So the, the Bible, there are things the Bible says, this is how we do this, this is how we do that. The Bible is clear on certain things. So if you're a man of God and you are not following the Bible, the Bible is the standard that I follow, not the man of God. So if you are not following the Bible, you are wrong. So it doesn't matter if that, that you're the man of God. And also I don't believe that God speaks to some people specially, and I, I don't know, as I am, God speaks to me, right? I'm a hair of the kingdom, okay? I am. I have equal rights and all that. So I don't believe that God, you know, there are people who say God told me to tell, or, or maybe because God told another person. I have never believed that something is happening in my life. I, I, and I have been asking God, how, asking for wisdom and all that regarding that thing. And God will leave me who it's my business and I've been asking and God tell another person and that person will now, I've never believed in all these things. So having said that, we see these um, men of God getting up to all these sorts of things. The Bible says in the last day, perilous times shall come, men shall be lovers of, of themselves, deceivers and all. It's just what is playing out because in the first place, a man of God shouldn't, he should have a sterling reputation. Now, now, I'm not saying he did this or he did not do it. Honestly, that, that doesn't pay any of my bills. I honestly don't care. I'm not saying he did this or he didn't do it. But you should have a sterling reputation so that there is no stain on your name. You know, like, like remember in the Bible when they were looking for a way to implicate Daniel. Was it Daniel and the other three, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Oh. Was it just him or were those other three included? But they were looking for a way to implicate him. And they watched him 247. They could not see anything. Do you remember that place in the Bible? Oh. The, the only complaint they now had was that he prays, is it every morning now? And he prays to his God instead oh. of praying to the God of Babylon. But they watched him like he was, if it's these days we have CCTV, they watched him 247. Right. Two, they couldn't find, they couldn't pin anything on Daniel. Right. The only thing, so I don't know how you're a supposed man of God. And if it's if it's not today, if <laughs> what people will say, chichiba and all so to today is embellishment. Sorry, today is embellishment. <laughs> to tomorrow is confusing you. <laughs> yeah, to, to, to today is embezzlement. Tomorrow is this, tomorrow is that. And you and people still, I don't know, and people are still following this person. It's just what is amazing. Okay, let me but um yeah, let me put it this way. You have heard you have heard them come out to say, touch not my anointed. You've heard them come out to say that. So perhaps this is how it is, because even a few years ago when we had that pastor Abiodun Fatoibo, I think was his name. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I wanted to mention that as yes. well. I wanted to say with all the remember also recall that all other people had come out to level the same accusation. There was yes. this lady that came out then and everybody maligned her. She's a Ron's girl. She's that, that, that. Oh, yes. That wasn't even the first case. I believe that, that the reason, um, the Busola, right? Timmy Dakolo's wife. I believe that the reason uh, people now took action on that was that, okay, that it was one too many. And then this was coming from her husband. Her husband was pushing it. Yes. Unfortunately, the voice of the woman, it's nothing in Nigeria. You have to have a husband to push things. Right, but you know, after all the uproar and everything, there were demonstrations in front of his church and all that. You still believe that this man still has a congregation? Like I will go and sit under that. And people man. were using their own words. real names to defend him online and saying that you should yeah. not talk about the man of God like that, even though all these people had come. And, and in fact, some people were now turning on Timmy Dakolo and um, abusing him. 
for doing for for standing with his wife with this type of thing and, and telling mm. him that he's embarrassed, right? And it's still human beings like you and I that are going to those churches. I keep wondering to myself, what is it that is in my brain or in your brain now from what you said that is not in their brains? What is it in their brains that is not in our brains? Because people will say, oh no, you can't. Um, there, even I say sometimes that there are many places where we can't use our own standards to judge people. But right here, right now, I can say these people are very stupid. So I can't understand. Are they, are they imbeciles? I don't understand how human beings can behave like this. How can you see someone doing something wrong and you come and say because he's a man of God? Doesn't that tell you from the beginning right then that this person is not a man of God? Instead of saying, why will you speak against a man of God? Why don't you say, oh, this person is not a man of God? And your explanation is going to be that people uh, people can, when none of us are saints, none of us are saints. I always say that we may not be saints, but you don't have to be in a position that you're not able to carry. Why don't we look at it that way? Because if you look at, for, for, for different offices, you have to, you can't get that office without having, without earning it on merit. You cannot now go and construct a bridge if you're not an engineer who has the knowledge to construct that bridge. So the position of a man of God, a pastor who stands on the pulpit, is someone who is going to have people that are looking up to him. This person is not qualified to do that. Why are, why, are, why are we acting as if we are stupid? Why? And that's why Daddy Freeze started having, uh, talking about sheep nation or I don't know what. Yeah, for something like, like that, something about, about sheep, yeah. I'm talking about sheep because you're moving like sheep. You know, it's like you just, someone, a shepherd just moves you people this way and you move that way. Why can't you decide? And the fear is that because I saw the Christo man standing there and saying, touch not my anointed, because if you do, uh, you're going to come to harm, this and that will happen to you. And, I, and that is the fear that these people are living under. But why don't you realize that we are talking about someone who is not even a man of God. If the person was a man of God, then you can begin to say, oh, if I speak against him, maybe this and that and that. This is not a man of God. You know it. Now we're talking about the pastor Toby guy. Right, and I like to say the pastor person's guy because these people are not pastors. Because it's the same thing, like I was even called to come and start preaching in a church. I love to dance to secular music. You will see me outside in the public, all of a sudden the music starts and I start moving. So anybody can wake up any day and be called a pastor. Yeah. If I wanted, I would have my own church where I am the pastor who's on now. So does that automatically make me, does that automatically make me a man of God? It doesn't. So by the time you have somebody who is impregnating people, raping people, having or having women have their own children in their own husband's homes, and you're still saying, touch not my anointed because they're a man of God, don't you see that you're an idiot? I don't like to speak like this, but this is a fact. And I'm just hoping that one person or two can wake up can you wake up and stop being so stupid? It makes no sense. It makes no sense. It makes no sense because any somebody can hurry. The other day, I had a woman here who said she married somebody who claims to be a pastor. The man said he was a pastor, met her in the fellowship, and he deliberately was going to that fellowship to meet somebody to marry, wanting somebody who would zip up. He deliberately went there to look for a girl that would be quiet, married her, and, and told her that by the time she's, she's done school, she won't go to work. And then he kept her in the house and was maltreating her, was abusing her, was financially abusing her, everything, even physically. That is the kind of person that you say, touch not my anointed. So I asked her, why didn't you expose it to the church people? This man was running a pastor and you people were, you people had a church. Why did you not tell the church people what this man was doing? And I said, how did you even sleep in the same bed with this man? How did you live in the same house with this man when you actually know that he's not a pastor? Because you can say maybe the person, human beings, are, we're, we're fallible. We can make a mistake. A man of God can make a mistake. But this man deliberately named himself man of a pastor falsely and then went and presented himself to this woman and her family as a pastor. So uh, doesn't the same Bible, these people who talk about such not my anointed and the man of God, is it not in that Bible that it says that by their fruits you shall know them? 
it's in that Bible. So by the time a person displays this, da, 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 that, you can tell. So you're telling me that, and it's the same way that, okay, so the Jim Jones of Guyana, how many decades ago that killed all those people, these same people who who, who um, defend Fatou Ibo and all those all these wicked people. I want them to come out and say that what Jim Jones did was just a mystic that a human being made, that that man was a man of God. Can they really do that? Do you think they will do that? They won't do it because that is not their pastor in their own church. So how is it that all of a sudden their own pastor in their own church, even though he's a spawn of the devil, they want to just pretend that he's a man of God? What sort of brainwashing is that? It's sad. I, I don't know if it's, yeah, the, there is brainwashing in there, a, a lot of brainwashing in there. There is also like the a societal thing where the person who has the more money or the power, you know, wins, right? So so the person who has the more money or the power calls the shots and it doesn't even matter if, if they are getting it or not. I love it's also the saying. whole fake respect thing we have in I Nigeria, in, in many of our cultures. I call it fake respect, right? Because when, when you compare other cultures and what respect means to them, especially here in the West, you see what, what respect means to people here in the West. They hold open the door for you. They want to take your information. They ask you, can I do this? You go to the hospital. They're about to do something. They explain it to you. They, you know, that that's respect for human being. They, they want to give you an injection. They tell you, I'm giving you an injection. I'm about to raise up your dress. Can I raise your dress to give you an injection? And I'm wondering, if you don't raise the dress, how do you want to give the injection, right? <laughs> but, you know, we find all this funny. But, you know, that's the respect for boundaries respect for the human being respect for even animals see how they treat dogs even squirrels respect just respect for the earth respect for nature respect for anything but no in nigeria in africa what, what, what we call respect is that someone comes up someone comes out and demands respect because maybe they are older or they are richer even if, even if they are absolute bumbling fools oh. like you see an absolute fool come out and demand respect maybe in the home or maybe in the church, or uh, in the gosh, office, you're taking it there. <laughs> and all that. And I'm taking. And it starts from the home. I'm sorry, it's, it does start from the home. You know, and so <laughs> they are not concerned about how do I earn this respect, how do I maintain this respect. They've forgotten the fact that respect is reciprocal; it just flows. They so in Nigeria, what we know is the forced respect, the pretentious thing. The so it is. It's just in a combination of factors that. It makes it all a huge mess that I, for, for me personally, I find it tiring. I, I don't even... I'm actually going to go back a little bit to say that, actually, it, I made a mistake even by saying Nigeria because for a long time, I was thinking about us being those people who look at the fake, fake people as pastors and follow them as if they were really men of God. What I've come to realize now is that it's it's also this um, it it also happens out here, out here away from away from yes away from Nigeria. It happens a lot as well, where people will follow blindly what this person is saying because he has put himself on the pulpit, because somehow he was able to have um, a very smooth song and found himself able to create a crowd of people around him and now name himself pastor or other people like him named him pastor. And then people begin to accept everything that comes out of his mouth until the day that something happens to them in that church. And they suddenly realize these people are really not talking about the same God that I've been, I've been thinking that I was worshiping. Yeah. Did you mind if I ask you a question? So I'm not saying brainwashing only happens in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have cults now. <laughs> if you watch Netflix, mm -hmm. you see all these. Exactly, exactly. You have cults and you hear things yes. and you're like, oh my God. But if you compare what happens here, where people have, it's just a few people, they they have to, they have to, they, they go to in one establishment, they go living there, they cut off contact from the world and all that. Yeah, that is like so a cult, is brainwashing. I'm just saying that in Nigeria, as is worse, because we still... Nobody's even isolating you, and you still can't use your brains. That's it. 
So, oh, so right? you know, the people who join. Yeah, when, that, when you watch all these cult movies, it's people who are, some people say my daughter had just died, that these are vulnerable people. They are You don't know their mental state at the time and all that, right? Yes. So, so these are vulnerable or really children. Well, that, is that is the yeah, difference. Exactly, that is the difference. But my problem is that in Africa, in Nigeria, you see like... <laughs> but there is, a, okay, no. There is a similarity rather. The similarity is this. They are still vulnerable people. Okay, so now after I have called you guys who have been like that in your lives, after I've called you idiots mm -hmm. and imbeciles, I'm now going to take back my words um, because the thing is you've been behaving like idiots and imbeciles, but I understand that it's uh, it's they're vulnerable people. Unfortunately, I'm not I'm not going to go back and edit what I said because. If the person comes across this and hears this, I want you to actually know that that's how you're behaving. So I think it's still good. You're behaving like an idiot and an imbecile, but let me not say that you're an idiot and an imbecile because come to think of it, they are vulnerable people. You know why they're vulnerable people? Because, no. yes, because you're born into this thing and many times, and, and you're born into a society where there's a lot that is beyond your, that is beyond you. You, you have a lot of struggles where you're not able to do a lot of things. And it's not the same as, as in, in this society where we are. Because here, you have help. You know, when you have some difficulties, you can still have extra help. Things that you're not able to do by yourself. Because we have a social welfare system. We have other things that are there. The, 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 there are opportunities that the government has put in place. And those are the things that we pay taxes for to help us. But in Nigeria, when you get to a point where you feel like you are, you are stuck, you f there's a feeling of desperation, you know? There's a feeling of desperation. And even for people who have money, for yeah. instance, some women who, who have money, but are in relationships where the husband is abusive, they still have issues despite having that money, because they will not have the support of... So there's so many things happening. They won't have the support of their family or their friends in dealing with this abusive relationship. They will not have the support of the authorities. There are many things that a woman like that can go and report to the police, and the police will not do anything about it. For the men, there are many things that they can be going through, but the authorities will not be there to support them because they will be there to support the person who has more money and is able to control the police. So then to make matters worse, you're born into this thing where people actually have been told that this is a person to listen to. So if many people around you are, are behaving like this, there's every likelihood that you, you, will, talk, you will do the same thing. So I, I think that people like you and I, maybe it's something that has happened to us um, or maybe something that's happened to us to make us hypersensitive and hyper observant and actually trust our senses instead of trusting what we're seeing around us. So they are still vulnerable people because they are they are reasoning and um, they are reasoning and their trusts in their senses and their abilities have been curtailed. They've actually been cut off. Also, I think that our culture does not encourage us to ask questions. But the, you know, but, but the Christianity that we practice in Nigeria does not encourage us to ask. In fact, Christianity yeah, it doesn't encourage us to ask questions. The world has been taught, has been, mm. has, has been taught that you shouldn't question because if you're asking questions, that means that your faith is... Yeah, your faith, faith is, is that... I, I remember that the, there was this particular man of God my parents used to like. In, in the, like, so... They, they, he used to hold um, some uh, programs on Thursdays uh, and all that. I, I don't even remember. I remember then. I don't, don't even remember how we were free to go for programs on Thursday mornings at the time. Yeah, because my mom was still working. But, so so he, he gave me a certain prophecy. Then I had just finished secondary school. I was about to enter the university. He said a couple of things, which I, I honestly, I didn't know if I believed. I, believe me, I was like still having a, a mind that asks questions, right? So usually you just follow your parents, right? Believe they know the best for you. Believe they don't. They don't usually, mean you harm. Of course, my usually, parents didn't mean me harm. Usually, 
Yeah, usually, yeah. So my parents, they, they just wanted to serve God and maybe they, I don't know. So so, so this man gave me this particular prophecy. We didn't add up. He didn't. I was just about to get into university, you know, and I was discussing with my mom then. I was like, mommy, check this thing now. Check this thing. And she knew she was the adult in the conversation. No, oh. Okay, but we, we went for that man's um, program like over a course of years, okay. right? So I can come up with so many experiences where okay. I did not agree, right? But okay, but the one that the one I'm talking about right now, I would always come back and ask my mom how, <laughs> you know. So, but this particular one I disagreed, like, and my mom she didn't want to badmouth him, but I'm sure she was having her own doubts as well. But I don't even know how we resolved that. I was like, no, God certainly did not say that. No, and I was a kid. <laughs> And, and then after I just became the disillusioned, like, no, I don't believe. Okay, but, but, but in my own case, I had a personal relationship with God. I really early, I started studying the Bible, studying books from, you know, Christians. I started reading like Kenneth Hagin books and all that. So I always tell people, if I didn't have a personal relationship with God, I wouldn't even be a Christian today. I mean, if, if all I had to go by, it's all these things that I see now. Honestly, I wouldn't be a Christian today, like... I'll be a good person that there are many good people in this world, but I wouldn't be a Christian. So we argued that my mom left that later on. I finished the university. I, I got a job that wasn't good. That job was a torment to me. Like I was tormented. I was depressed. I was in everything. So I prayed really hard and God opened the door for me and I got another job. And, but, but that job was in Northern Nigeria, right? Yeah, but it was well-paying, you know, international exposure, everything. So I got that job and I moved. And then my mom comes to tell me that this man of God said... Again, that man again. Yeah, this, no, no, they were, I told you it was over a couple of... A long, they were attending his church. And then my mom comes to tell me that this man of God said that, that why did I leave the job that I was doing to, to go to the not? That, that God said that I should have had patience where i was that he would have blessed me there that i was mad that was the first time i told my mom you see i was an adult then over 25 i told my mom you see i have to tolerated you this your man of god for long they take my business out of that man's mouth don't take my prayer don't, what that certainly didn't come from god because god saw that i was dying in this job and he saw how i prayed and this other job is actually a miracle so he said, I was like, that was when I told my mom, don't, if you want to look for my trouble, don't, I, I, at least you have trained me and big enough now. Let me pray for myself. Do you understand? Yeah. And, and you know, after that, she now stops. I'm just, let, let me round this thing up. A couple of years after that, we now heard that this man left his wife of how many years to, to, to go marry a 25 year old girl. And then the story came out that he, he's, he's abusive. He was abusive to his wife and all. You, you know when they tie all those, their scarf and come out and be doing mama. You don't know what they're suffering inside. But the genes just came out, you know, stories of abuse and all that and all that. And it, it was really stinky gist. And while I didn't like, it, it was so, it, um, it was so sad. Like, see, this woman had been with her husband and all that. And now all this crap is happening. But I made sure I called my mom. And, and, and I, yes, I called her. I was like, Mommy, what did I say is happening with man of your God. man of God? And she said, eh, eh, sort of, I know you are coming to gloat. Is, is, this is not the time to gloat. This is the time to pray. I was like, no, I'm not calling to gloat. It's at a, what would, what, why would I gloat over his situation? Would that pay my bills? I'm not calling to gloat. I'm calling to, you know, reinforce my point again that these people are human beings. And these people are mere human beings. You know, Do you understand? Is, yeah. no, so, so the way you, you know, you people have so made them like God and all. See, see the, this kind of thing he did. Would the normal unbeliever, would the normal unbeliever do this? So in, imagine that I didn't really say no and you stand on my feet. He's telling you. Yeah, the, the, this is how these people will see these prophecies. They break marriages. They break relationships they break between fathers and wives. And, sorry, between um, mothers and... They, they go about with these, their prophecies. And, you know, and I just have a problem with people who just believe all this. You have the Bible. You have the Holy Spirit. You have basic, ordinary, common sense. I mean, why, why does anybody... So, 
I don't know. It's a topic I get really heated on, but I, I just wish everybody the best. But even when I'm dealing with people, if I see that you are the religious kind in the sense that, look, I go to church. I love God. I'm a Christian. Okay. But if I see that you are, your own religion is the type that does not use sense, I just begin to, I just begin to move away from you. Okay, because so you like to be carnal, eh? So you are a carnal, you, you are a carnal minded person. You want to be using your sense. You don't want to be waiting for the uh, directions from from their where the, where they get their, their spiritual directions. You don't want to be waiting for spiritual directions. You are so you carnal. Know, I I think that this also stems from laziness, because if you study the Bible for yourself and have it, I think it just stems from la laziness. There are people who outsource prayers. I'm going to pray for me, fast for me. But you know, people do all these things. I think it's, you know, so it's just a combination of factors and laziness is, is still one of it, really. Okay, so it's a pity. It's, it is laziness, but the laziness is a is taught. They're actually taught to be that way. When you say laziness, my understanding of what you're trying to say is it's you're not taking your own time to go and find out from God by yourself. You're not taking your time to go into the word of God, to learn things to apply to your life by yourself. You are taking it from somebody who has done it on your behalf, the so-called pastors in quotes, men of God. Uh, the, the ones who will sell you, they go and do it and then they will discuss with God and God will send them, their God will send them the soap and the water and the oil that they will bring for you that will help you. Those are the, that's why I'm calling it laziness. Mm. So, but the thing is that they were taught that. They were taught it and they've taken it as a, as a way of life. And you know what is so sad about it? Because from your story now, what you can see is, that's why I was saying that it is, um, they're vulnerable people because they've been brainwashed because they were born into a society where the people who were teaching them about life, for instance, the parents, the uncles and aunties, all the older people around them, this is the way that they know how to yeah. live. They need to rely on these people. So when you see, so what, what has happened now is that's why you see that you see full grown adults who are acting like they have half a brain because they've never been used to processing things by themselves. So that you are shocked at the things that they do. And when they come to discuss things with you, you are shocked at the things that fall out of their mouths because they've never been processing things by themselves because and the brain is a muscle. Isn't that what we always say? The brain is a mm -hmm. muscle. If you haven't been exercising it, it's, there are parts of it that remain dormant. And so, yes. So that's why you are an outlier and it's like, what on earth is this person talking about? Why is she saying these things? What does she know? She knows nothing because she's carnal. This is the full belief. Because what you do by coming to conclusions and saying things is, is strange to them. It's like, how dare you take that kind of chance? Because if after all this, the real issue here is not even really that you are not... Because nobody cares whether you follow the principles of Christianity. The real issue here is that you are doubting, so your faith is low, so you are, you're not going to heaven you are not going to heaven so if you really pay attention it's like the focus of this whole thing is have faith believe in god so that you go to heaven but i know that god, jesus christ is not even the jesus christ that these my fellow christians nigerians talk about he, he the main thing that you always ask are you saved what is the meaning of are you saved are you saved means what does it mean interpret it in in in, in plain language please what does it mean what does it, it mean when they say, are you saved? So, I don't even want to go there. If they're asking if you're saved, I, I think it's, uh, have you like been suppressed or intimidated enough to just say, <laughs> and, and then you don't swallow fast. anything I say? You are going without... too far. Is it not, is it not, are you, is, if Jesus Christ comes today, because when, when they want to preach to you, evangelize to you, evangelize to you, it is, mm -hmm. if Christ comes back today, are you going, are you going to make oh, him? Oh, will, will you go back with him? Oh, will I've heard that before. Him? So, oh, so uh -huh. that means that means that the focus of that, and this is the reason why you will not speak against the man of God because you want to make heaven, because you don't want to judge, because you want to make heaven. So it is not the focus that Jesus Christ came for. What did Jesus Christ say when he what did he say he came for? Because as far as I know, he came that you may have life. This thing that you're doing, is that life? Mm. Living in a place where somebody is treating you like a goat, is that life? Are you a princess or a prince when you are living like this? Is that life? You're not even a child of God. Apparently, you're not even a child of God. Because if you're a child of God, there are certain things that you won't even... There are certain things that you know, this is not for me. But you see people submitting themselves onto hardship. 
and calling it Christianity because you've been taught to not think. And that is why you, I, I will see a person who calls himself a pastor and he will speak to me and, and, and have a, a, a sexual relationship with me and then on Sunday, get on the pulpit and be preaching and I will keep quiet about it because I mustn't speak against the man of God. Mm -hmm. Because he has been submitting to his leadership. See, I've, I've had experiences with some of these um, church people, men of God, in different de denominations. And believe me, that they come with, oh, <laughs> what's this man of God? He calls it a co cunningly devised fables, right? You need to be both grounded in the word of God. You need to have a lot of common sense. And you also need to have your own personal strength, right? So I, I used to know someone telling me then, he was a Catholic priest. Then he would say, he would say he has two parts: a, his humanity and his divinity. That that his humanity needs to be tended to. That 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 sex is not only for marriage. That that um, that is good. Oh, well, yeah, good. But, but come out from there and stop posting that, yourself. They can come out now. That, that right. sex is not only for marriage. That sex is for two people. Who love each other and are committed to each other that that so doesn't really happen in marriage that that even in marriage you don't find that which is not a lie and so yeah exactly but why are you telling me that you are supposed to be like a priest like <laughs> so why are you gisting me all this to turn my hair uh -huh, so okay, okay. So that's so, how they do it because i've not yeah they understand so it's not like so, so some use force and intimidation mm. but some also use this head like and I'm I'm Gosh. sorry, unfortunately, there's a woman. Yeah, that sounds like what that lady said. Uh, Fatou yeah, we, we, we women in Nigeria are disadvantaged. I'm sorry, especially um if you're beautiful. I'm sorry, you're dis. It's a dis. <laughs> the beauty is a disability in Nigeria. If you don't have money again, join. Ah, my father. And then you now, <laughs> you now. So you you just meet all sorts of things. All people, you know, all sorts of people try to say if you're a bit intelligent, they, then they change the tactic. And all that. So it's you no. Know, if, if we are raising our daughters, I think that we have a lot of work to do raising our daughters. We have work to do for our sons, but especially mm -hmm. our daughters, and what especially if they live in Nigeria. So what do you actually mean? What so that we don't miss that? What is what is what is it that you have in mind when you say that? No. Okay. So so of course there are many things to tell your children when you're raising them. But for a daughter, your woman, a, a woman, your daughter is going to grow up to be a woman. So so there are specific messages. Like you're supposed to tell them, especially if they're growing up in Nigeria with the culture of be quiet, respect elder, we don't do this, we don't with the culture of suppression and silence and shame and all that. There, there is a setting where you should raise your daughter. Of course, that relationship should be open. Tell them the truth about certain things, encourage them to ask questions. If they don't understand, ask questions. Tell them that no matter how old that the person is, or richer, or more than no, 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 no. eh? the, 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 the matter about telling them to ask questions, it has to start. Yeah. From, it has to start from in that family. When but, you're but bringing, that's what I'm saying. You, you yourself, do you entertain your question? Their own question. You entertain their question. Yeah. Does their father? Yeah. Are they? You know, some people believe that children are not bad. Yes. You know, yes. No. There the, the, was something my mom taught me very early. So. Uh, of, of course, I was a fine Oibo child. So, so we had this man. We call him Uncle Ugochuku. He was my father's friend, not like friend, friend. You know, acquaintances and all that. So, so he came one day. I was greeting him. I remember I was like four. I have my memory is very. I was like very very small. So I, I was greet. I went to greet him. He now carried me or put on his lap. I think he kissed me or something. No, no, not on the lips or anything. But he was too. So my mom was there watching i was really small so immediately when he left my mom called me uh, and my mom said never allow anyone to carry you or touch you like that again so i was trying to protest and me too i was surprised like he just literally like snapped me up my mom said yes when next you are greeting if they, are, if they want to carry you 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 too you move like <laughs> do you understand these are the things you have to teach your children very early my mom said ne i have cousins that my mom my mom never allowed us to do sleepovers when we we're growing up sleepovers weren't even a thing but i have cousins that my mom lie lie my mom would say you go and sleep there you, you are not going anywhere we were four in my house two boys two girls my mom said no 
anybody that wants to see you people should come here and be seeing you people let's you know so yeah you know these are the little things and then there was one last thing my mom said i met this man then i was still a teenager and so i was like oh he said this he said that he said that and my mom said okay is he a christian is he saved and i was like and i saw him in church now he even and um, he even quoted the script or something <laughs> and, and, my, and my mom told me something she, she was like never never assume that before you because you met someone in church or that because somebody is something in church that that person is a christian my, I, so you understand these are the things my mom told me from a young age do you understand and i think we should pass on this thing to our children especially the girls we are doing them a disservice if they if we release them into this world in a clueless state it is honestly it's both 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 I think both um, both genders are actually facing both genders are facing the same the same the same um, the same risks. Both, yeah, but it's different. Both, both have their own risks, but the the risks for women are different than that for men. Yeah, yeah, but generally, of course, generally, there, there are some specific things you tell your daughter that may not apply to your son, you know, and vice versa okay all right so um yeah and in closing this i will say that i do know that there are people who are actually pastors and who are men of god okay because i don't want that man of god to come across this and feel heartbroken that these other evil people have painted middle of made us to paint all of them with a black brush or with black paint because i do know i do know that there are those people and i have come across one or two of them you know, but the rest of them, who we all know, but are too afraid to acknowledge and admit to ourselves that these are brothers of the devil and they are demons in, 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 in human form, they are the ones that we're talking about here. You know, and when you come across these people, you know, because by their fruits, you know them. So stop doubting that thing. I know you've, you've grown up with it for 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 65, 70 years. And your brain has not developed in that area because you haven't exercised it. But before you die, I want you to stop doubting yourself and know that what you're seeing with your senses is true. Let this, tell these people to get behind you, Satan, and stop listening to them because they are not men of God. They're not men of God. May I also add something? Let, let me also add that. Um... We are in the family of God. We are family, right? In, in the Bible, we are all the body of Christ, right? So while the pastors are the head, that's fine. But let, let me also add that they, they need us to be accountable. Do you understand? They need us for accountability. This is not a dictatorship relationship. You, I do anything, follow me, I'm the boss there. They also need us to be accountable. Like if, if the pastor remembers, that a member like if i do this thing sometimes even you as a person don't you remember that ah, if i do this thing how will you look in front of my children ah how will you ah, and there are some things you were doing not necessarily bad so we're enabling them yeah that you would help exactly them. so i'm just saying let, let's remember that they're also accountable to us i i knew someone who would complain bitterly she was working he working for a pastor and this man would owe her and it's not like there was no money this man would owe her running in two months and I, I kept telling her, why are you keeping quiet? You're not even begging for money. Go and ask for your wages. This is irresponsibility. And I'm like, they won't try it for me. Call me first month, second month, I won't come to work. You call me. I cannot afford transport money. We are working to get paid. If, I, if you're not paying me, how do I come to work? So I kept on telling that girl, you know, I have no sympathy for you. You are the one tolerating irresponsibility. You are the one. I don't even know how that case ended. You know what but, but, but let's just also know that when we do the right thing, I'm not saying she should go and drag him on social media or anything. Exactly. That's but what ask say. him for your money. Okay, what it. for it? What I always say. Ask it's him for your money. Make him responsible. Let him know that this is not okay. In what case I, he doesn't I know. Say, remember, is even with relationships, with your friend or with your partner, a romantic relationship, you need to open your mouth because when you think that you you are keeping quiet because you you want peace this lady she's keeping quiet because she wants peace with that pastor 
these people in these abusive relationships, they keep quiet because they want peace with that person. Don't forget. What you are doing is that you are ruining this because what is she going to do tomorrow? She's going to abandon, walk away, and talk about him and everybody will hear bad things Exactly. Yeah. And then you yeah, will I, I think she, she, she was already sharing it in a group mm-hmm. that I was in. And then you will someone someone bitterness. Else. Yeah. You will employ someone else and ruin that person's life. The person will owe their rent. They won't be able to pay this. Other. But if you call the person, it, so the, what I always say is don't go fighting, right? You don't have to fight. I think I think this is what makes people not speak up because they always feel like a confrontation. You have to. No. You call the person. You are simply speaking the truth. You see this thing you are doing. It's not okay because it does this and that to me. Right? And you, yeah. refuse, to, you refuse to allow them. because Intimidate you. Or, 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 or tell you that you don't have respect. I mean, How don't that, I have respect? I'm asking for my money that's that's that I work that's for. Cool. That's even another angle. I want you to, you to see? also do your part in teaching this person the right thing to do. Exactly. Because when you do that, instead of us having 10 wolves in our society, we have only two now. We continue to reduce it and everybody continues to learn to live together in peace. Let the other people teach them. Yeah, I know. I can see the time. Let's, let these people learn the right thing to do. Don't allow them to escape. Be- because also, like you said, that confrontation you are avoiding, it's going to happen sooner or later. And it will be worse. And, and, yeah, and by the time scale. it now happens, it, it's going to be blown out. It's going to yes. be bitter. Yes. It's going to, you're going to drag each other. Yes. So why not have a simple conversation at the beginning? Just, yes. just so we're clear. That's why that woman was saying that um oh they're waiting for the husband to get old so that when he's old they will deal with him so yeah waiting <laughs> do you understand it's like anything that you keep well, anytime people keep <laughs> see dying. how human beings think nobody nobody likes see how human beings think nobody likes to be mistreated every time you're doing it the person who is being mistreated has their own um plans in the, 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 there's something happening and one day they're going to it's going to they're going to implode and it's going to be bad for everybody. So mm. even, even the people, that's why I said people that are keeping quiet, they're not good people. No, they're yeah, not. I agree. They'll actually be evil people because evil is brewing in their minds. So when you're keeping quiet and you know someone is doing something wrong, you are even evil yourself because you are planning evil things, you are feeling evil feelings, and you are hating that person and you are encouraging that person to continue being evil instead of being a changed person. So do your own, play your own role. Play your own role. Well, this is what we are on earth for, right? Nobody is perfect. Iron sharpness, iron, right? Mm -hmm. So when when I say people should not keep quiet, it's not because I'm trying to stir up trouble. I'm trying to say this is the right thing to do. Correct, correct it. Just don't go about it fighting. If you don't know how to do it, come, I'll teach you how to do it calmly. Just don't go, don't go fighting, right? No, no, we, we, we don't have a culture of addressing issues in Nigeria. We would rather hide them, hide them, hide them, and then when it, it, it gets out of hand, then you we don't everything. have the culture of addressing issues. You ruin everything in time. Somebody you might don't. have died. Somebody might have been raped. Somebody might have lost yeah. their income, their their rent, their house. It's just not. It makes no sense. It makes no sense pushing the evil day. It will still come. Right. Okay. Thank you so much for this conversation, Oni. I will. Yeah. End this now. And I, I am sure that this conversation is helpful. And I keep forgetting, remember to like our videos, subscribe and share our conversations because these are things that are supposed to help us to learn and improve and do better. Thank you very much, Oni, for sharing from your own um, knowledge and experience of life. All right, and with that, close this. (laughs) Bye-bye.